Uh, we've been in this series. We started last week talking about going all in. Going all in, going all in, going all in. How many ever heard that? Like, you know, give it your all in baseball or, or football. You know, you got to give 110%. Did you know that you can only give 100%? That's as high as it goes. That's it. You know, once you get to 100%, you're dead. It just doesn't work anymore. You know, I'm giving 115%. No, you're not. You're only giving 100%. That's all you can do. But we all deal with the lie that more is better. Isn't that what you're taught? You're taught that in school. More is better. You know, if I have one, I need two. If I have two, I need three. I got to have newer. I got to have bigger. I'm going to find peace and happiness and contentment and gold at the end of the rainbow, right? If I just keep pressing, if I keep going, if I keep, if I keep uh, listening to the culture around me. But what happens? What happens when we fall into that trap of more? More is bigger. Bigger's better. You know, you just kind of go through that cycle. Here's what it is. Anybody know what this is? Bingo! Last week they got money. There was people running up here to grab dollar bills and fives off of a fishing pole. But this week, instead of that, the fishing pole, like we were kind of chasing different things, the carrot in front of you, you know, fame is what we talked about. But this week I want to talk about what it looks like when we get in that hamster wheel. Have you ever seen a hamster use one of these things? It's like, what are you doing? You're not going anywhere. You just keep running, and it's like the faster they go, and then they just jump out for a minute and then roll over on their belly and act like they're dead. And then they get up for a minute, and then they do it again. And it's like, why? Why would you do that? Why would you do that? How many has got a treadmill in your house? We had one uh, for a while. It works really, really good to hang your clean clothes on. So, I mean, you got like the little arms there that you put it on. And if you turn that on, it dries them, in case you was wondering. <laughs> so it's like a dryer when you put that on there. But the, the, the treadmill is like the hamster wheel for adults is what it feels like. It's like you get on there, you run, you run, you run. And I'm like, where am I going? What am I doing? I don't know if the hamster actually does it for exercise or just enjoyment. I don't get on a treadmill for enjoyment, okay? I struggle even getting on one. We sold it. Now we've got a bike, and it works really good for clothes, too. And our, uh, was it Bowflex or something? I don't know. I mean, you can tell I use it a lot. But um, it's, like, it's like when you get on that treadmill, it's continu continually pursuing more. Think about our life in the culture we live in is almost like the treadmill or the hamster wheel. And then you look at somebody in their life, and you're like, why are you doing that? What are you chasing? What are you accomplishing? Because you just go round and round and round and round, and then you go faster, and then all of a sudden you're what? You're exhausted. I need a vacation, right? And then you're like, okay, I'm rested. I'm good. Let's go again. We're going to conquer the world. We're going to get everything that we need. But the thing is, is pursuing more and more and more, what happens is it's never enough. This thing will never quit turning in circles until it's completely wore out or broken. But you will just keep spinning, keep running, keep going. Our theme verse for this message series comes from John chapter 10, verse 10. If you've got your Bibles this morning, if you don't have them, you can use that YouVersion Bible app. Uh, it's a really cool tool that we use around here. Uh, you can click the bottom right hand of the screen. It'll say events. You go to the Bridge Church Live. It'll have these scriptures, the message notes. Um, if you'd like to know more. Plus, it's kind of cool because we start groups this week. Um, so you can bring your notes Wednesday night and ask your questions. That's the great part about it, or talk about it. So save your notes. You've got to hit save at the end of the service or they just disappear. Don't ask me where they go. John 10.10, 10, the thief enters only to what? Steal, steal, kill, and destroy. I'm glad it didn't end there, right? It goes on and says, Jesus said, I came so that you could have life, but not just life normally. What does it say? So you could live life to the fullest. You can have the best life. Have you ever woke up in the morning and say, man, I'm just tired of doing this? I'll be honest with yourself. You're just like, you're like, this is exhausting. I'm just doing the same thing over and over and over. But I wonder, is that the question because we're not going all in, we're not doing what God really wants us to do, 
We don't always live life to the fullest, but the key to that is going all in, going all in. We have hard times, uh, have a hard time letting go of certain things in our lives. Does anybody else have that problem? Things you're like, man, I wish I could quit doing this. I wish I could lay this down, but every time it hits me square in the face on Monday morning, and it's like, why? Why am I doing this? Different things distract us. They pull us away. I've I've shared it, and I'll share it again today because it's opening day of football. Woo! Go Vikings! Ah! (laughs) Hit me in the heart. (laughs) They play the Packers today. Go Chiefs, anybody? Okay. All right, at least I got a little. Go Rams? Okay. All right, I don't know where you're at, but uh, it's football season, and, and I would lose myself by, by doing it. I'd be distracted with, with football or hunting or fishing or, or golfing or, or work or chasing. Last week we talked about fame, what it was like. You know, we had to get so many likes on social media Instagram, Facebook, and, and that's where we, we, we based our walk and how credible we were and how well we're liked. Today, I want to talk about money and stuff. We talked a little bit about it last week with the money and, and, and the stuff that we accumulate. How many of you need to purge your house? Mean that you need to get rid of some stuff. That's why I told my wife we moved every two years. We've been married 23 years. We've moved 24 times. And that's not a lie. That's the truth. And we're still married, happily married. But we have less stuff as we've done it. So I don't know. We've been there almost two years again. I don't. Should we move, babe? I don't know if she's even in here. We would probably end up being in trouble if I moved this time. But we're going to talk about stuff. We're going to talk about money and how many of you in here would be okay with being rich. It's okay to raise your hand. Now, when you say rich, you're like, okay, well, well, define rich. Here's the way I define rich. I don't have to pay a bill again in my life. When I want to go somewhere, I can just go. I don't have to worry about where it's coming from, where it's going. That, to me, is like, I don't care if it's $1,000 or $10 billion, wherever you're at, if I don't have to worry about it, that's what I look at. Who wants to be rich? Come on, raise your hand. Who wants all the money that you can ever imagine? Me. We all do. How many of you ever thought that rich people don't really know how to be rich correctly? It's like, why are you buying that? You don't even need that. Because if I had money where, like, it was endless and I didn't have to worry about it, I didn't have to try to work or stress over this and that, you know what I would do with it? I would go buy a thousand acres somewhere on planet Earth, not sure where, and I'd build a house right in the middle and put a pond there and maybe a swimming pool and a shop and, and just live in that little spot. Or maybe you're the person that would go buy an island somewhere. Any beach people? Hot, warm? Okay, got some out there? Yeah, that's good. Or, or again, another thing I would do is I would go try to hunt every animal on the planet once. That would be, that'd be so cool. Maybe, ladies, you go buy out the whole store of TJ Maxx and the incorporation so it's free. You can just go in and get what you want when you want it. How many vacationers are out there? Like to travel the world, go places? Yes, yes. Do a little bit of that. The question is, is what are you and what am I willing to do to get to that point in my life, to get rich. Let's just say for $5 million. There was an article that I read, and and this is where people agreed for the following, uh, for $5 million, they would do these things. Uh, One person said they would listen to country music and only country music for 20 years straight, nonstop. Someone said that they would, for $5 million, have all of their teeth pulled. I've actually had to pay people to pull my teeth, so I'm all in for that one. You can get veneers, right? I mean, if you got an endless amount of money, five million, you can surely put in some new, you know, the new grill or whatever they call it. (laughs) Somebody would cut off their left arm for five million dollars. 
I'd have to do my right because I'm left-handed, but this one I'd probably do for free, but I'd need my family involved. Live alone in the middle of nowhere for 20 years. I could do that in a, in a minute. You know, I, I tell my wife all the time, I said, we need to like move to Alaska and just, you know, live off the land and go off the grid. And it keeps getting a no. I don't know when they're saying it's a, like this resounding no, we're not doing that. And I was like, yeah, but wouldn't it be cool? No, it wouldn't. But another question that was asked is, what is rich? Where do you determine that? I just asked that a minute ago, but the poll revealed that people that make $30,000 a year said that if they made $75,000 a year, that they would be rich. They would consider themselves rich. If they made $50,000 a year, they said that if they made $100,000, they would be rich. Six-figure earners, people that made over $100,000 said that $5 million in assets would show that they have made accomplishments, that they achieved, that they would be rich. But the poor guy that made $2 million, he didn't even make the cut, so I guess I'll just be that guy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Because being rich and trying to chase and to go after money and stuff and things, and I'm guilty of this, so again, I'm preaching to me. If it helps you, I hope it does. But it's like this. It's like, okay, Rocky, you're back on the wheel. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Faster, 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 faster. For what? For what? Because on a hamster wheel, you never go anywhere. It's constantly chasing the same circle, the same circle, the same circle. Until I'm exhausted, I'm wore out, and then I'm like, why am I doing this? What am I doing this for? Uh, contrary to belief, this isn't a new development. Jesus actually talked about money in the Bible because having and wanting more of it is part of our human nature. And I want to encourage you, and I'm going to encourage it as I go through this message. I'm not telling you not to chase, not to go, not to be successful, not for God to bless you, to pour it out. I hope everybody's loaded by the end of next week with everything that you need. I pray God's blessings. That's not what I'm talking about here today. I'm not trying to take that away or, or beat anybody up for, for doing what you've been blessed to do. But I want you to look at what the scripture says in Luke chapter 12, verse 15, because Jesus said to them, watch out, be on guard against all types of what? Greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. I've got a bad habit of like, and I don't know if this is, it's something I was probably um, cultured into, I guess, or maybe it was a lack of, but it's like, to me, it's, I don't even care what it is. It's about like the find on a deal, okay? It's all about the deal, I don't care if it's for $2 or $10,000. If, you know, if you, if you can go find something that's worth $10 and you can buy it for a dollar, it's like, yeah, I win. And then it's like you do it again. Does anybody else do that? Okay, well, I am sorry. Hopefully I can hit something that helps you. But there's a lot of things that we could say about money, but there's two thoughts that everything stems from, and this is the first one. I want you to write it down this morning, and that is to recognize and appreciate that I am blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed beyond measure. If you raised your hand earlier wishing that you were rich, I want you to understand something today that you are rich. You're rich beyond measure. I want to show you that. I want to do that, uh, give you some perspective of that. And you're saying, well, I don't feel rich. You're saying, like, uh, I looked at my checkbook this morning, and it definitely says I'm not rich. I'm going to give you some perspective on this. Did you know that over 3 billion, think about this, 3 billion people, 3 billion people that live on the planet Earth today live off of $2 a day or less. $2. And what happens is, is this is kind of some of the things that I end up doing is, is I become upset or I become frustrated. What upset me most recently is, is something I ordered on Amazon and it didn't come the day I wanted it. It was a week late. And so I became very frustrated. I became irritated. Or 
When I order pizza from Papa John's, I don't know why Papa John's, probably because it's the only one that delivers into the country. And I ordered that pizza. And I specifically asked for extra garlic butter. And they didn't put it in there. And I almost got to the point, I, I went, I'm like, I don't even need it now. You know, it's just, might as well throw it out. All I want to do is clog my arteries and, you know, have high cholesterol. And they can't even get that order right. Because I'm, I'm so focused on what I don't have or what I didn't get. Or maybe you're in the middle of that movie on Netflix or Amazon Prime or whatever source you're doing, and you're watching it, and it's like in the most intense moment where it's pulling you in, and all of a sudden it bloop, stops, and you got the little buffer circle going on. It's like, why? What, 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 did, what did I do? Or the day that you needed your AirPods, okay? You had to have your headphones, and you forgot them, and so life comes to a complete end because you can't function if you don't have them in, like when you're flying, and it's like, well, I got to listen to everybody now. I'm just, I'm just going to cancel my flight and go home. Does anybody else do that stuff? Okay. I mean, you go to the drive-thru, and it takes like four extra minutes, and you're like mad at the guy. Well, give me my food. I'm leaving. Like Starbucks ain't working right. I mean, think about Could you imagine living off of $2 a day? I spend more of that on coffee in the morning at 8 o'clock. I don't do it very often anymore, but, I mean, go buy a Starbucks coffee. How much does it cost? Six fifty for a large, at least. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I, I tried to wrap my brain around this, and I'm looking at it. I'm like, am I going all in? Did you know that driving a car puts you in the top 15% of the wealthiest people in the world? And I don't want to take people... Take, take lightly that people who are struggling, you know, maybe you're here today and, you know, you got a mountain of medical bills or, or maybe you're that single parent or you've just been laid off and, 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 and I understand and I completely know what it looks like to be under financial strains. My wife and I, when we first got married, we lived in a, a little one-bedroom apartment that was not even as big as this stage and you could put, we used to make fun of it, I mean, not fun of it, but I mean, it was our house, but you could stand in the kitchen, put your arm in the bathroom Leg in the bedroom, your other arm in the kitchen, and you were in all five rooms at once, or all four rooms. Can't do five. But you, I mean, it wasn't very big. And, you know, the cockroaches, they just had their little spot that they'd run down the, the baseboards, and, you know, we'd just welcome them every night. Not really. She wasn't very happy about that. We only lasted there six months before we had to move. But I get it. I know what it's like. And, and it doesn't matter what st- statistics say because you still need to come up with the money to pay your electric bill. You've got to have that. You've got to do that. And as a church, that's what we, we want to connect, and we have connected with resources around Cape Girardeau, around our city, and around this town. Um, and, and we want you to know that we're here to help. If you're struggling, if there's something going on in your life, and maybe it's just like, man, something just hammered us, the engine blew up or whatever, we have resources. Don't be afraid to ask. It's not shameful. There's nothing wrong with that. That's what we're here is to help each other. And I'm sure most of you kind of know where I'm going. We're, we're pretty rich. We're pretty blessed. And God has blessed us, especially compared to a lot of people in the world. I watched some of that stuff when we went to, um, we went to Jamaica one time. And we went to Thailand to pick up our daughter when we adopted her. And I looked. If you've ever been out of the Anybody ever been out of the country to a different country, a different area? And you kind of you see the differences in the culture. And you see how people survive, how they live, and it's like, man, how do you live like that every day? How do you get by? And I thank God every day that I wake up that I'm blessed beyond measure. And if that's true, if I've been blessed by God and, and compared to the, to, to the rest of the world, do, do I want to be or do you want to be a smart rich or do you want to be a dumb rich? You want to be wise with what God's blessed you with or you just want to kind of squander it away? Living a full life, living life to the fullest, going all in means that I want to be rich. I want to be rich in this world, in this, in this state of mind, in this point in my life, and I'm going to do it in a way that honors God. 
I want to honor God with what he's given me, what he's blessed me with. If I ask you to say, I'm rich, just say it right now, I'm rich. Does that feel funny? (laughs) Because you know it's probably not true when you look at your checking account. But I love what the, the wisdom of Solomon gives us. In Ecclesiastes 5 and 19, he says it this way. More, moreover, when God gives someone wealth and possessions and the ability to enjoy them, to accept their lot and be happy in their toil, this is a gift of God. What God's given you, you're blessed beyond measure. How many drove in a car today? You did. If you did, you're blessed. It's a gift from God. Second thing I need to do is recognize and understand why I'm blessed. Why did God bless me? Why did he give you certain things? Why has he uh, poured his blessings out on you? I know it seems a lot like the first one, but here's the thing. You're rich, and it puts you at a disadvantage because we are so distracted of getting more and more and more and more and more and more. We can't even stop sometimes. I, I sit on the back porch and I, uh, or on the front porch in the mornings and sometimes we're drinking coffee and, and we'll be just sitting there and we'll, we'll look around and be like, where we came from to where we are. And I could say, you know what, man, I made some really good choices and, man, I'm a pretty smart guy and it has nothing to do with me. It's all because of him. It's all because of the blessings of God. And I want to prioritize my life and my finances, my resources, my time to go all in with God. Culture shouting. And we hear it. We see it. Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, all these different things that we go through. We put in our lives. Work. You see people at work. at school. What you don't have is always what you think you need. Anybody agree with that? It, you know, when that, see the commercial on TV, you're watching that Netflix right after it quits buffering and it actually comes back on, and you get the commercial and you see the new 14XD Pro 4 Niner Dash 2 iPhone that came out. Because I don't know, they just keep adding letters to it. I don't know where they're going to end. You know, it just came out. Pre-order right now and you can have it in two months and be the first with the brand new phone. Anybody like getting a new phone? I hate getting a new phone. I can't stand it because you got to go put all your contacts in there. You got to re-log into all your passwords. It's really confusing. Or that new TV that come out that the ultimate plasma HD high definition, you know, real life comes out of the screen at you, TV comes out, and it's $5,000. And then in two years, it's only $250. Or that new purse, that new pair of shoes, the brand new Yeezys came out, or I don't know this stuff. I'm just going off what I've heard. Or your furniture, it's got a little bit of wear on it. You're like, oh, we got to go buy a whole new set for the whole house. Let's just go get it. And get, they told me it's like, you know, 12 years interest-free. We can do this. We got it. Or your computer's a year old, so it's outdated. It's behind. Or my, my, my realm, it's like, you know, the new bow that came out, the bow, the compound bow, and you got to have it because it's the newest and the greatest thing, and it'll shoot 5,000 feet per second because that makes a big difference. Or that vacation, we'll just, we'll just, we're just going to go on that vacation. I know it's just out of our budget. We got to put a little bit on the credit card, but we're just going to go, right? We got to push. We got to go. We got to get it. We're rich. We're rich with opportunities. And those opportunities overwhelm us. When you're running on the wheel and you're running on the wheel and I like, I got to get this stuff. Got to get more, more, more new bigger. They overwhelm us, wear us out, exhaust us to the point that we miss what matters the most. That's what I want to share with you today. Let me give you a story about a fisherman. This fisherman had one boat. Every day he'd get up, he'd go fishing, he'd come home around noon, have lunch with his wife, with his kids, After lunch, he'd lay down, take a siesta, a little nap. Anybody like those? 
get up from his nap, go out, clean his fish, take what he caught, take it to the market, sell, sell his fish enough to pay the bills at home, and he would bring home dinner. And he spent the evening walking around the shoreline of the lake or beach with his wife. One day he was at the market, and he seen this man approached him. He's like, man, he said, I see you in here every day. You know, I'm a businessman. I can show you how to take that one boat and turn it into five boats. You can have 50 employees. You can work seven days a week, 10 to 12 hours a day, and, and you'll have it made. You know, you'll be rich. You'll have everything you need. And the fisherman stopped, and he asked him, he said, why should I go through all the trouble of doing that? And the rich man answered and said, so at the end of 20 years, you'll be able to go home at lunch, take naps in the afternoon, pay all your bills, and be able to spend your evenings walking on the beach with your wife. It's crazy. Why do I do it? Why am I on the wheel? What am I chasing? What am I chasing? What am I chasing? What am I doing? Because here's the bottom line. More money isn't going to keep your kids off drugs. More stuff isn't going to take care of the diagnosis that the doctor gave you. More money won't take away your depression. More money won't save your marriage. And when we start to believe the lie that more money, that more stuff, more things is all we need to be blessed and to be content, to be happy, and it takes us away from being all in with God and puts us all in with the world because we're here, we're here, we're here. I want to give you something. Money is temporary. I've said this a lot, and I, I say it again today, that I've never seen a U-Haul behind a hearse, ever. So what we accomplish, what we gain, is it something for all of us to go in, or is it, are we all in for God? You're like, okay, well, what are you saying? I need to sell everything that I work so hard for and that God's blessed me for? Absolutely not. I want you to accumulate more. I want you to have more than ever before. If you've got 10, I want you to have 20. If you've got a million, I want you to have two. That's not what, I'm not talking about selling it. it, it it's, it's making sure that I see it and I look at it through the eyes of eternity because Jesus is eternal. And what I'm investing in on this earth is not to invest into what's going to get me through, but it's investing in eternity, into people, into the things that people have and what they are, and to bring them full circle to say, okay, what do I need to do to go all in with God? How many needs more Jesus? <laughs> if you got enough, let me know. I want to talk to you afterwards because I'm still working on it. This is a journey called life that I'm continually working in my own life. I'm cutting areas. I'm adding areas. I'm putting in. I'm taking out constantly. You should write this down. We aren't blessed to be rich. We are blessed to be generous. Today's message is about generosity. More stuff. More money. But how are we generous with it? First Timothy 6 and uh, 17 says it this way. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant nor to put their hope in wealth. How many knows it could be gone tomorrow? <laughs> what you think we have security in the stuff, it could be gone tomorrow. That's why I want to put my hope and my trust in him, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God who richly provides us, and I love this part, with everything for our enjoyment. God wants you to have stuff. He wants you to have things. He wants you to have fun. He wants you to be able to not be on this wheel. He wants you to go fishing. He wants you to go shopping. He wants you to go hunting. He wants you to do whatever you feel like doing. But he's wanting you to do it with a generous heart. And when we do that, it changes our perspective. Don't feel guilty about what you have. That's not what this is about. God gave it to you. He's going to continue to give it to you. He loves blessing his children. And when you're faithful, when we steward what God has given us, it's multiplied over and over and over again, but don't lose focus about the part where it's from God. The Bible says, whom much is given, much is required. The blessings aren't all for you. 
and say, look what I've done. It's all about him. It's about what God's done. Continuing on into that, uh, Timothy 6, verses 18 and 19 says, to command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. They will lay up treasures for themselves so that they make hold of the life that is truly life. When we invest in the people, when we're generous with our stuff, with our money, with the things that God's blessed us with, we're laying up treasures in heaven, it says, because we are not making it about us, we're making it about him. And when we're generous, when we can understand what God's given us, what he's blessed us with, we're going to experience life to the fullest. You may need to get off of the hamster wheel, stop for a bit, look around you and say, wow, look what I do have. Living a generous life is living a life of all in for God. Last thing I want to give you this morning as we close Pastor Anley Stanley said this, God has blessed me with more than I need. <laughs> I am rich. But I will not trust in my riches, but in him who richly provides. Because I have more, I will give more, and I will do more. So as I close this morning, I would ask that you ask God to speak into your heart. Am I all in for God? with my stuff, with my finances? Am I chasing? Am I, am I so consumed with being on this hamster wheel that I've lost touch of where God has and what he's given me? So as we bow our heads and close our eyes this morning, I would ask that you just ask the Spirit of God to speak into your heart today, to speak into your life today. I'm asking him to speak into me once again and to God continue just to work on me. Can we pray this morning? God, I thank you so much for the blessings that you've given us, that you've given me, Lord. Lord, I recognize that you are that source of blessing. And God, it wasn't just given to us and poured out on us to do what we want, but to be good stewards of what you've given us to further the kingdom of God, to make a difference in people around us. Give us freedom to enjoy, like the scripture said, to enjoy what you've blessed us with. And not to get caught up in greed and chase and money. But at the same time, Lord, give us a sense of responsibility to take what you have blessed us with to make a difference. God, I pray that you would help our eyes to see the opportunities this week to do good for someone, to maybe have that opportunity to be generous, to truly find and live life to the fullest every day in Jesus name amen as we continue to pray this morning I never like to leave without giving somebody the opportunity to make their way right with God maybe you're here today and you don't know Jesus maybe you've never really said God I need to go all in I need to give you everything that I am everything that I have maybe you've never had a relationship with God or maybe you've been walking with God and, and something has distracted you, has pulled you away and, and temptation or sin has got a hold of you and, and you're not where you need to be. Today, I want to give you that opportunity this morning to make that decision to say, you know what? I need to go all in with my life. I need to go all in with God. If it's your first time this morning ever saying, I need to give my life to Jesus. When I count to three, I just want you to raise your hand. We're not going to come back to you. We're not going to have you come up here. We're not going to do anything weird. But simply, between you and God, we've turned the lights down. But would you be bold enough to say, God, I need you. I need to give you my life today. On the count of three, would you just raise your hand if that's you? One, two, three. Say, that's me. I can't even see, but God sees your hand. He knows where you're at. He knows your life. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, maybe you've walked away from God and you've let sin have a foothold in your life or, or maybe you've let temptation pull you away from God and you're not really seeing where God has you specifically and, and you're kind of in chaos. And you're like, I don't know where to go, what to do. 
Can I tell you that regardless of your mistake, regardless of your current circumstance, regardless of how you're living, that God can change that in a moment? He can, he, he's standing right here this morning with his arms wide open saying, come back. I'm right here. If that's you today, I want you to say this prayer. If it's your first time this morning, you can say it in these words or you can pray it in your own. But right now, would we all pray together? Say, Heavenly Father, I give you my life, the life that you've blessed me with. Lord, I ask that you forgive me of all my sins. God, make me brand new. I'm tired of living it this way in my own way. You are all that I need. Lord, I ask you this morning right now to fill me with your spirit, to guide me, to direct me, to lead me, because my life is not my own. Lead me to be good, to live generously, to show your love to those around us. And right now, God, I ask that you would save my soul as I give you my life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Can we stand right now? Can we worship big? Can we give God some praise this morning? Yes, hallelujah. Thanks for listening to today's message. We pray that it strengthened, encouraged, and empowered you. We would love to connect with you. So if you have questions, need prayer, or simply want to let us know how this message has helped you, please send an email to info at thebridgechurchmo.org. To stay up to date with all the events at The Bridge, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. 